Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over how to play Zetterburn. Uh, he's one of the faces of Rivals. Uh, if you're playing Rivals for the first time, you're probably interested in picking him up simply because he's so familiar or similar to the spaces from Smash. And so he's really intuitive in that sense. And he's just in a lot of uh, the media that Rivals puts out just because of, for that reason as well. And because of that, I think this will be a good good time to talk about how to play him if you're just getting into it, especially with Definitive on the rise, they're coming out very soon. Uh, hopefully you get something out of this. And so, as usual, I'm going to be going over his strengths and weaknesses, how to use all of his tools, how to play neutral, his basic combos, his recovery mix-ups, and lastly his kill confirms. Uh, and so, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to the game now and just talk about some of that stuff. So, his strengths and weaknesses. Uh, he has a really great projectile in his side B. This fireball is really great controlling space, and it's a very core part of his neutral game. He has great combos. Uh, he, he's just really quick, especially with his shine, um, which I, can talk, I will talk about later. And then he has a lot of ways of killing. He can kill vertically um, with his up strong very easily. He can kill off the side with his down strong. He's really good killing off stage as well. He has a lot of uh, moves that lead into his his down air, which is a pretty solid spike. Uh, and so he just he has really good ways of killing, which is another strength of his. And honestly, his one weakness that I can definitively say is that he can be gimped pretty easily, especially if you're not comfortable with all of his recovery mix-ups. But that's not to say that his recovery is inherently bad. It's just that. If you get caught off guard in one bad position, I think it, it can really easily lead to him being gimped. Um, but if you if you're aware of that and, and you're and you're mixing up very well, I think you're gonna find yourself getting back onto the stage a lot. And so that's uh, his strengths and weakness. One weakness that I, I've listed out here. Um, now I'm gonna talk about all of his tools. And so first of all is his fire mechanic, which is a damage over time. All of his specials apply it. His up special can apply it his side special is down special and of course his neutral special is shine and his back air so all of these things apply fire onto the enemy which as you can see is a damage over time uh so he was at 39 after the back air and after however long like two or three seconds you'll see it does five extra damage what else does this do it also empowers his strong attacks so that it, as you can see uh his up strong normally it's just a single hit. I mean, they're all single hits still, uh, but it doesn't have any extra animation. Once someone's on fire and you upstrong them, uh, it definitely gives a bigger effect, and it is a lot stronger as well. So trying to find ways to put them on fire before you use one of your strong attacks to get the kill is very reliable. It also helps him in his ways of killing as well. So another feature or property of the fire is that it will last the two seconds or two or three seconds, however long it is, until it goes away. Or if you're hitting them, if they're in hit stun while they're on fire, the fire will also not go away. So I'll show that off right now. You've seen, I'll just do this again. There's how long it or there's how long it takes for Orcane to lose his uh, fire without me touching him. And here is it whenever I constantly up tilt him. Oh, I should probably put no DI on. Like, you can already tell. Maybe you could already tell how, how much longer it lasted, but I'm going to put him on no DI just so I can easily get him in hit stun or keep him in, in hit stun. So, yeah, I mean, you'll see that he won't, his fire won't go away. I'm just pressing pause so I can reset his percentage to zero. It doesn't reset the fire timer. Uh, so, this is a pretty interesting mechanic. As you can see, the fire still ticks. I can up tilt, the fire tick will go up 1%, and then I can hit him again. And what that means is, it's even easier for Zetterburn to combo into, into a strong while they're on fire, because while you're comboing them, the fire is staying on them. Uh, so that's a very interesting and noteworthy property of his fire mechanic. With that being said, let's move on to his other moves, or his, his actual moves now, instead of just the, his, his, his fire gimmick. So jab, it's really good. It, it's, it's a really good jab, honestly. It has good range and disjoint. It has like a decent amount of disjoint, especially for a jab. Uh, and I think it's like frame five. 
Oh, it's frame six. So it's not like one of the fastest jabs, but still really solid. Um, and then let's see, dash attack. Very good for setting up tech chases. Something to note is that he has a Gatlin combo, which means if you land a dash attack, you can cancel it. Like you can cancel the end lag of the, the dash attack into an up strong. And so, as you, so I'll show it without me hitting him. That's my full dash tech animation and I'm mashing up strong right after. If I land, if I land the dash tech, uh, as you can see, I can up strong right away. And this is another way like he can get kills. Um, you can find the Gatling combo to be very reliable, except when I miss it twice on this platform, I'm gonna get Orcane off this platform right now and put him on another one. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, there we go. So the Gatling is very, very reliable. Um, it can be DI'd out of at higher percents, but you know, and if you're landing a dash tech, a lot of the time it's going to be in neutral when they're running at you anyway, or they're like approaching you. And so it's not very likely that they'll they'll always get the DI out. Um, yeah, so otherwise, outside of that, outside of the Gatling, it's good for setting up tech chases. Of course, I have this Orcane to no teching right now. I'm going to put all of the DI stuff back on. SDI, I'll leave it none, but DI and Drift DI, I'll leave it normal. So yeah, you can, they can almost always tech it. It's also pretty good to throw out, like, like I just did there. You can dash attack on the ledge pretty reliably, and if you land it, um, you can you can set up for an edge guard. Let's see if we can get this orcane to not recover so high. I might have just kill them. Yeah, whatever. We'll save the application for later. Whenever I'm showing off uh, edge guarding stuff, but uh, just to keep that in mind, this dash attack is really good. Use is useful in this situation as well. Next is his up tilt, which is one of like I mean it's just a really really great anti air honestly, and it hits all around him. So I'll show it off real quick. That's how, that's how fast it is, so it's pretty fast, pretty spammable. Um, and it's great because it's it's pretty disjointed, as you can see. And it hits all around him, which means you can cover both in front and behind you. Something like that. If you if you don't know which way they'll tech, sometimes it's, it's useful just to throw out an up tilt and then combo off of it, like that. Um, overall, up tilt's just a great move. It can start combos, uh, leading to kill confirms like up strong later on. Or kill moves like up strong later on as well. F tilt, uh, probably one of my favorite Zetaburn moves, honestly. So, oh, let me, uh... Okay, so this is the startup of F tilt. The first hitbox is nothing too special. And you can see it's not that disjointed. But the rest of the move is really is really big and disjointed. So outside of the first frame, it's just a really big hitbox. It's a multi-hit. This is what it looks like when I when I when I use it a lot. It's a multi-hit, as you can see there. The first hit kind of stuns them, and then the second hit goes through. So it's two different hitboxes. Like that. Um, it's just so strong to use in neutral. I'll I'll very often wave dash forward forward tilt to win neutral um, just because of how reliable it is so it's a very very good move uh, down tilt is just a your typical down tilt I would say it doesn't knock them up it knocks them like straight in a way so on good DI it's not necessarily gonna combo into itself but it's good for platform tech or not not tech chasing but if I was to do a hit fall up air I don't want the sweet spot. You can you can see creative ways of uh, extending combos by by getting that quick move out since it reaches pretty a good distance horizontally, right? So you could imagine if you're creative in your combo game, especially vertically and with platforms, that you can use down tilt to to kind of extend combos that wouldn't normally get extended. And so next is Nair. It's a Solid multi-hit move, uh, can always like be DI'd out so that it doesn't lead into any combos, but that's not necessarily always going to happen. They're going to have somewhat out DI or no DI or some mixture of not perfectly out DI and you can almost always get like a, uh, an up strong out of it. 
You can also hit fall in there and get a true combo into shine. Like that. So something to keep in mind. Once again, if they if they DI the shine out, then there's nothing too special you can get out of it, but a lot of Zetaburn's combo game is about mixing up DI uh, by mixing like which side you're hitting them on, which way you're hitting them, and and also just mixing up whether you're in a hit fall and move or not. That can also be a big uh, a big mind game for the opponent as well. So yeah, Nair is a solid move, good to use in neutral since it's it's multi hit that lingers for a while. Uh, then that's Nair. Back air, as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, it lights the opponent on fire. It doesn't have a ton of knockback, so at low percents, um, you can kind of just chain a lot of back airs, especially on not great DI. But it's already good because it already lights them on fire, so you can imagine that back air to up strong can work, um, and amongst other things as well. Very good move. It's disjoint. It, it's okay. It it has like, I guess it. It really is pretty, it's really big vertically. I think the horizontal distance is like noteworthy, but nothing, not 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 super crazy. Um, oh, next I can talk about forward air. So forward air has more than one hitbox. It has the one at the top of Zetaburn's head, which hits them upwards more than, than, the, than the other hitbox. Uh, well, than the big one to his left. So the very large oval is the sour spot of Zyabrin's forward air, and you can see uh, in the bottom, at the very bottom of the big oval, there's another hitbox with an arrow pointing out, and that's his sweet spot. And that's stronger than the, than the sour spot, and can chain into each other. It, it's sim very similar to Crag Fair, if you know about that move. It's just like one of those moves that can chain into each other on bad DI, and if you and if you space and time your your movement correctly, uh, it can lead into other moves like down air, which is really good for for edge guarding, and even the weak spot, the weak hit at the very very top of the forward air, is useful for for continuing combos. Uh, you can like if I didn't if I had him to not tech. I just showed off all all three of the hitboxes. The first fair hit was above Zedaburn's head. I got an up air, I think, and then I got a sweet spot forward air, which you saw sent to, it had a different noise and it sent him further. And then I went for another sweet spot forward air, but it missed and I got the weak one, but it's okay. I still hit him and I made it back on the stage. You can apply a lot of pressure with forward air. Um, and you can imagine like if he wants to live, he's gonna be DIing in, but that just means you can chain multiple, multiple of them together just like that. And that'll work at a lot of different percents. So four years is a really good move. Um, and then moving on, I'll talk about his up air now, which also has a sweet spot and a sour spot. The sweet spot being very at the very top um, of the hitbox, it sends straight up. So that means it it's stronger and it's harder to well not harder to di, but di is less effective against it in living because it, it sends straight up. So you, if you di straight right. Uh, it, it's going to send at an angle more similar to where the sour spot sends. Uh, the sour spot, as you can tell, is huge though. This move is gigantic, and you can throw out a lot. Like you can throw out two in one full hop, which is really really good. So you can just chain them together like that. Uh, the move combos into itself very easily. This is one of those moves where you really want to know how to hit fall so that you can get the most out of it. I mean, it's true for all of characters and rivals and most, if not all, of their, their aerials as well. But you can, like, if you can start a chain with falling up air, you can really get a lot of percent going on the opponent with, uh, with any follow-up you want. Uh, and that's all of his normals. So now I'm going to talk about his specials. So neutral B is a shine. Prob if you're coming from Smash or know anything about it, you're probably the most familiar with this. Uh, one of the so so this shine hits outwards from from Zetterburn. and so it says straight up. But if you were to send him off stage and then shine him right there, uh, like uh, somewhere above their head, you'll see that they go down. They don't go straight up. So it really just sends away from Zetaburn. Uh, 
Um, it's frame two. It's not a frame one shine. Fastest it can come out is frame two. Oop. Didn't mean to do it. My bad. Let me show that off real quick. So, pressing B for one frame. I let go. It won't come out. It comes out frame two. Now, something very interesting about this move is that you can hold it. You can you can charge your shine. So after about a second of holding the shine, it'll release on its own. And of course you can, I should mention this, is you can jump cancel the shine, the shine and lag. And so it releases a really big hitbox. It's not stronger, I don't think. I probably should have looked, done some research and figured that out and reminded myself of that. But if it is stronger, it's actually, I think it might be stronger, just not by much. It's not like, Shine spiking becomes insanely broken and you can kill at zero with this move because of its strength. There will be times where you can get kills with it, but you rarely get the purple galaxy screen, which is where you get like a essentially guaranteed kill from that move. Uh, think of the lightning and the zoom in from, from Smash Ultimate. Except uh, it, it works much more often. So... Yeah, as you can see, it's not like a, an, an incredibly strong hitbox, but it's bigger. I mean, the, the, the hitbox is what it, it looks like in the animation. It's huge. And so this really, I mean, expands the way he can play the game, honestly. Uh, you, can, you can camp on the platforms to an extent since you can jump cancel. Uh, something like that. You can, you can edge guard more safely. Uh, and a lot of other different things. So his shine is very versatile. It's fast or it's slow and, and, and big, whichever whichever one you want. Um, of course, wave shining is something you might want to pick up whenever you first start him, start learning him. It's basically just shining, jump canceling the shine, and then wave dashing. And it's easier in rivals because you can you can start your wave dash your, or your air dodge while you're in jump squat and it'll buffer so that you get a frame perfect wave dash. And so same thing can apply to wave shiny. Next is his down B. So this move looks like this. It'll, it gives him a boost upwards and forward and he'll do, take a dive similar to Falcon's down B. And also similar to Falcon's down B, after some time, you can, well, the move doesn't necessarily end. I could down B and then I'll and I'll just lose my stock if I don't press any other buttons, just like that. Or I can cancel it with one of two options after a certain amount of time. Once I've reached a certain like distance of falling, I will it will guaranteed regain my double jump. So I will run off stage right here. I'm going to use my double jump and my air dodge just to get really high up and I'm going to down B. So I will regain my double jump after a certain length um, and I'm gonna choose the up special. So that's what I'm gonna show off right now. I'm gonna double jump. I'm gonna start my up special. Oh, <laughs> sorry. My, my hand was in the wrong, pressed the wrong button. So I'm gonna down special. I'm gonna up special right, right as soon as I'm able to. So you'll figure out the timing. If you look really closely, he glows. Or he, yeah, he starts glowing white, just like there. So that means right now I can start my up special. Is it not? Oh, wow. Maybe that's a, a miss. Maybe it's letting me know that in a few frames I will be able to start my up special. That's interesting. I thought the first time he shined white, he wouldn't be able to. But maybe, there, maybe there's a, a delay. That's interesting enough. Good to know. But... What's most important is knowing the general length by feel, not by frame by frame comparison. So you can either up special out of it, like I've been doing there, or you can just use your, your newly gained double jump and get out of there, and get out of the animation. Like that. Um, another thing to note about his down B is that it will always recover his double jump the first time you use it in the air. Uh, and so how I, I'll... I'll explain a little bit about that now, and I'll go into it more when I talk about recovery mix-ups later. So if I use my double jump and I down B to the wall and I immediately wall jump, I will have my double jump regained. And it's not because I'm wall jumping, it's because 
I started my down B. So if you were to start your down B with without having a double jump and you get hit out of it before you reach that full length of falling, you will also regain your double jump. It's not about the wall jump. It used to be, I think, but it, I don't think it is anymore. It's, a, it's now about starting your down B. You will regain your double jump right away. So I'll show it off right here. I'm going to double jump, down B at the wall. I'm going to wall jump off the wall and then double jump. That's what I did. I'm going to down B, wall jump, double jump, and I'm back on stage. Double jump, wall jump, double jump, and I'm back on stage. Now, it only works the first time. So if I were, yeah, if you were recovering and you get, and you already use your down B like one time and you, and you wall jump off of it, and then you get hit again and you try and do it again, you will not regain your double jump. The only way you can like infinitely regain your double jump is by doing the long version way over here. If you do that and you fall the, the full distance, then you can, then you get your double jump back. And that's basically how his down B works. The only other thing which is important to mention is that you can cancel the move with your parry or dodge button. So if you press it right as you down B, you can see he goes into a completely different animation. He, he like, he's doing a backflip. And as you know, I can show off there, like you can pretty easily edge cancel it if you get the timing down. Uh, but this is the length it goes. You have some drift control, so I can drift backwards. After I do it, I can go forward. Um, it's just a mix up. That means you don't have to throw out a hitbox because a lot of people will try and parry your down B since it is a hitbox and it sets fire on the ground. Um, if you if they're going for a parry though, and you do the the hitboxless move then 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 we'll then you're gonna get it back on stage and you've mixed up your recovery enough and you and you're back on uh so there's a lot of nuance and implications to his recovery game based on all of those down b options i just explained but feel free to like whenever you're learning him come back to that part of the video um i think i go over everything that needs to that that describes how his move works um it can be hard to master at first just because of all the options but but I think I think it it's not it's not hard to well yeah I think it's hard to master it could be hard to master but with time I'm sure you'll get it um, side B is the fireball I talked about it lights them on fire it just inherently controls a lot of space like if you throw a fireball up there in rivals a lot of people love their platform movement especially in neutral so if you throw a fireball at this distance, you're basically forcing them to play a grounded game, which depending on the character might be a benefit to Zetterburn, especially if he has his forward tilt like he does. Um, another thing to know about his side B is that it has a head hitbox. So I'm going to show it off real quick. He reels his head back and launches it forward. So this is its own hitbox. And then the fireball gets formed, which means if you're close enough, uh, let me send Orkan this way. If, he's, if you're close enough, you can get two hits. You can get the head hitbox and the fireball. Just like that. Or you can sometimes just get, just get the head hitbox. Like that. And you hit him with the head hitbox, and then the fireball is formed and goes flying past him. Uh, just something to keep in mind, which means it's actually not a terrible move up close. Because you have the head hitbox that comes out. Uh, which... Also makes this move really good close range in a weird close and mid range in a in a weird way. His up B is similar to the spaces uh, in Smash. Um, it has 24 angles you can hit it. So let's see if I can show them off real quick. So you can imagine that there's the four cardinal directions. There's straight up, straight down, straight left, straight oh straight down, straight left, straight right, uh, which leaves 20 angles to hit in between each of those. So let's see what I can do. That's straight up. That's the next one, so that's one. Oh, I think that's the same one. Two. Mm, I think that was three. Four. And five. And so those are the five in between angles that correspond to each quadrant. And then you have the four cardinal directions. Uh, the only thing to note about his up B is that it sends the opponent in the direction that you're up being, which is a very new change. 
as of this video being released, it, it came out like this change was implemented like a month or less than a month ago. And so that's all of his moves. That's how they work. Um, and now I'm ready and we're going to talk about how to play neutral with him. So the first step, like I've been saying, I think it really is establishing control with Fireball. Uh, depending on how you want to approach this time, you could do it. Like on the low profile characters or the short characters, they low profile a short hop Fireball like that. Which, if timed right, even limits their movement even more. Uh, like they can't even short hop now. Or if they do, like full hop over the Fireball, they might already be in the air and you might be able to catch them off while they're landing. Or they've already chosen to full hop, and now they're on a platform, and you have this huge up air that you can spam to get at them. Something like that. Um, just controlling a lot of space, forcing options out of your opponent with fireball is a good, good, good thing to use. Do both. <laughs> uh, next is grounded. Uh, like that, I, I'm saying next because I think fireball is like your first step of like setting the pace in neutral. Next. If you want to play a grounded game, you have some options, like you can wave dash forward jab or wave dash forward F tilt. You can really see like that's max space F tilt. So from here, I think I can, well, I think from here I can wave dash forward and forward tilt them. Just like that. Um, which is a really big distance if you think about it. We're pretty far away, but the forward tilt will reach. Um, if you want to get the jab out first, then you can. I think that's another good option because you can mix up into an up tilt and then get a forward air. And look, it, the forward air, the sour spot, comboed into a sweet spot forward air. Just try and keep that in mind when you're using him, that sometimes your combos aren't over just because you don't land the, the hitbox you wanted. Happy accidents, right? Um, another thing you can do is just throw out a fireball. Instead of throwing it in the air, you can throw it on the ground. Just keep in mind that they can parry the fireball and get invincibility out of it, and it sends the fireball back at you. You could, in return, parry it. Let's see if I can show it off real quick. I don't want to spend too much time on it because it's not that important. But what I want to show off is they parry a fireball. You can parry the fireball as well, but it won't give you invincibility. So, make them parry. Two, three. Oh, almost. Two. Wow. Or cane. It's like you, you, you wanted to get hit by it. Almost? What? Oh my gosh, I wasn't ready for it to actually get sent flying. I should also mention it. It it, 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 go, it gets faster once it's parried. But I just didn't think the Orcane was going to parry at that time. Oh no, this is not... I wasn't ready! Wait! Alright, whatever. Just know that if you do <laughs> get the fireball, or if the fireball is parried at you, uh, you can parry it, but but you won't get invincibility like they do. So it's basically always losing for you. And because of that, you don't want to always do a grounded fireball. Brings me back to my point. Uh, but it is a good mix-up, especially at mid-range because you have the head hitbox. So if they run at you, they're going to get hit by the head hitbox. And if they don't, and they're just not ready to react in time, they're going to get hit by the fireball. So you can sometimes just get away with using that in neutral as well. So wave dashing in with a jab and a forward tilt. Sort of like grounded game is just wave dash in forward air or nair. Um, I say it's grounded because short hop is like sort of grounded in a way. Um, you're not really... It's just really close to the ground. It can be done. That's why I consider it. Uh, so, you can always do that as well. I like to use Nair more than Fair and Neutral. Especially Grounded. Because I can combo into Shine and I can maybe get something else out of it as well. Never know. Uh, aerial. His Aerial game can consist of Full Hop Nairing. If you don't know exactly their, where their position is going to be or you want to try and catch a lot of different things from a platform, you can Nair them. Uh, you can plat drop aerial. Now this is not unique to Zetterburn, especially in Rivals. But he has some really good options. I mean, his up air, you would think, is the least intuitive one. Or would be the least effective. But due to how big it is and how great it is to combo with, um, it can be really effective. 
Of course, you have other plat drop aerials. You also have plat drop fireball, like I've mentioned. Like that. Um, it's like, it's, it's almost unreactable. It's just really, really hard for, for players to deal with it. If you position your fireball coming from a platform mid-range, they won't be ready for it a lot of the time, and you can get a lot of starting combos from it. So after you land an attack, tech chasing can come to a few different things. Uh, you could just go for, you know, four tilts to cover a certain, like one, maybe, at best, two options. Um, I will tend to wave shine, so I'll use shine to cover tech in place and no tech, and then I'll use like a wave dash out of it and do a jab or forward tilt to cover another option. So I'm going to dash attack to set that up. And that's an exact example. I dash attack, they teched away. If they teched in place, my shine caught them, but they didn't. And so I wave dashed out and I up tilted. And so I was able to follow up. Um, you can apply a lot of pressure with that. And just because the sheer amount of options you, you, you cover, it's really, really good. Um, other thing you can do in the corner, like we are now, you can, let's see if I can get them to low percent. Let's see. You can use down strong to cover a lot of options since it hits in multiple places. Or, or it hits, hits both in front and behind him, like that. I like that example. Let me move or came back a little bit. So you dash attack. Um, in the corner, you can cover all of their options. Right here, you would cover every tech option which means you're guaranteed hitting them off stage. And like I'll talk about later, you can you can really, or I guess I can talk about it now. S since playing neutral can lead to edge guards, I'll just mention that moves that lead into down air are dash attack and dash attack, down tilt, and forward air. So if you, I was use dash attack. Oh wait, I want to lead it down. Let me use that. So dash tech, forward air, and the down air can work. Um, it does depend on DI, but it also depends on what, what hitbox you get. And what percent they're at. It depends on a lot of things. But it's very, very reliable. Um, you can you can kind of fish for it and it's hard to avoid. The arcane jumped out of it there, but I think at a few more percent that that might have been true. Um, just keep it in mind in your game to try and get lead into it down there with four dares off stage. Um, let's see what else is there. I guess like that's mainly it. I would I would mainly focus on that at first. Four dare into down there off stage, similar to what you just saw there. And the the moves that lead in the four dare are dash attack, down tilt. And I guess you can get like almost anything. Like four, four tilt can work on really bad DI. Four dare can work on really bad DI. But uh, getting that into your muscle memory is going to be really, really good for you. And so just kind of repeat those steps with fireball. Depend mixing up your grounded game with uh, wave dashing in four tilt, or maybe you want to go in with a fireball, fake it, and then do a plat drop up air, or four air, of course, anything. Uh, like that. And that's how to play neutral with him. Uh, next are some basic combos. So, Zetterburn really comes down to mixing up DI and by, by, by switching which side you hit them on. And just about creativity. Honestly, he has so many options that you can find yourself doing a lot of really cool things. But I'll just go over some things. Uh, some, some, some examples here. So I've already talked about Nair hit full shine. You can do that. Like, this is 100% true if you get the timing down. Oh, I, I should mention it's it's true with forward momentum. If I just do an in place nair, it does, it's not always gonna work. I think like here it might not work. Anyway, so there's that. Um, I've mentioned how good falling up air is and I've shown it off a little bit, but you can really, uh, you can really get almost anything you want out of a sour spot up there. So the sour spot can combo into the sweet spot like that. The sweet spot can combo into the sweet spot. Like that. The first one I missed a wavelength, so that wasn't probably really true, but 
yeah, you can you can get up up air into up air. Um, but you can mix it up with nares into forward tilt. You can mix it up with. Oh, I was gonna go for another fair, but you can mix it up with forward tilt right off the bat. Um, you can start off with a Nair instead, and then switch to another aerial if you don't hit follow it. Like that. That was a sour, sweet, or sour spot Nair, or fair, but it could combo into the sweet spot. Um, on DIN, it's kind of like... Oh, I'll talk about that later, actually. I was going to talk about somewhat of a kill confirm, so I'll mention that later. Um, what else can you do? I've mentioned you can do fair chains. Even without the sweet spot, you can get fair chains. Like that. Um, you can get back air to down air, like I showed there, which can be useful. You can get oh wave oh this is one of my favorites to do at low percent, or maybe like mid percent too. Yeah, I'll choose I'll mid percent. Um, I like to wave shine into a jab, so like that. The reason why I like it is because it catches people. Like, this is just a CPU, so they're not really going to get the mix-up idea, right? But if you want to tech a shine, it has one timing. There is a way to, to jab right when they're going to go for the tech from the shine. And since they'll get tech locked out, you will um, you'll be able to catch them off guard with a jab. And they'll basically just stand there in front of you because they tried to tech and now they're just standing there. Um, so it's a really good mix-up, one of my favorites. If you don't want to go for that, you can just go for the forward tilt. It almost always connects. Uh, just get the muscle memory down. You'll be able to do it this fast really soon. It's not that hard. Um, it just looks really fast. I'll com sometimes I'll I'll like start out in neutral like this, just to like I don't know, kind of scare the opponent, make them not sure what I'm going to do, and then I mix it up. Maybe like I don't actually approach with sh wave shine. I'll I'll go for something else. Sometimes you can get wave shine up till it all depends on their DI. Keep in mind that all of it's going to change depending on how good, not really how good, but just in which way they DI. And so that's true for other ways you can combo. So if I was to do a falling up air in a nair or in a shine, you can see that they'll be sent out. Uh, but if I was to wave dash across them like that before they came out hit stun then I've crossed up the way my shine is going to send. So right now there's no way to put like DI right, I don't think. It's just like up, out. Oh no, there is. They implemented it. Okay, sick. Perfect. I can show it off then. Uh, I'm going to have the CPU DI left. Um, that's where they go on DI left at that percent. What was the percent? 45. I still have it set. So now if I have them set to DI right, Oh, well, I'm sorry. No, no, that's not what I want to show off. I want to show off me mixing up their DI when they hold left. So you would think DI left is DI out. That's what they think. If I just cross them up. Oh, messed up. And in fact, I'm going to put them at slightly uh, lower percent. So if I cross them up, they're going to go straight up just like that. And so now I can combo them. With up tail, I can combo them into up air. So, stuff like that is really, really good. Um, and and it just it gives you more options and ways to mix up your opponent. Because it's not react. It's going to be really hard to react to, I'll say. Uh, which way they die, right? It's going to be hard to react to your wave dash to their right side into a shine. Um, so keep that in mind when using your combos. The same thing applies to your up air. So as you see, the right DI will always send that way. Uh, let me just... And they stock. If I was to mix it up mid combo, you saw one of the up air sent the character straight up, or Kane went straight up, and it's because I, I hit them from the right side. So the up air just sends the up air will just send. It says in, in a slight angle, but it really has like a reverse hit or a, a kind of a reverse hit box, where if you hit from the right side. And they're DIing, right? They're just gonna go straight up. Or maybe it's not a reverse hitbox, maybe it's like a flipper or something. I don't know the details. But that's how it works. <laughs> um, and so yeah, you can get other things. I think those are like the really important key uh 
takeaways from his combo game is that you can really mix people up by switching the side that you're on. You can get like at zero percent, you probably get like you know a couple of up tilts if you wave dash. Oh, let me send them off. You can probably get a couple of up tilts. Oh my goodness, what was that? Yeah, like that. You can get a couple up tilts. Maybe you can lead into a forward tilt and di out. Um, one other thing, the last thing I want to talk about, I'm talking about a lot of different combo options, but it's because he has a lot of ways to combo. One thing I want to talk about is comboing into fireball. So, yeah, let's just put them at, yeah, sure. They're at 80. If you land a sweet spot up there, I, what I like to do, and they DI out or far away so that you can't combo them again with another aerial. I like to time and place a fireball so that they either true combo get hit by the fireball or they are forced to jump, which puts them in a really bad spot because now they don't have a jump and they're high in the air. So I want to show that off real quick. If I get a sweet spot, I, well, that's kind of a bad example because I could have comboed into an aerial. Let's try it hundred percent. Mm, let's try one more time. There we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the Orcane had to jump. So you can imagine, since he's used his jump and all he has is an air dodge to mix me up, and along with his moves, uh, I can just like shark him with more up airs or I can go for a bunch of other different things. Like I can just shark for an up air like that and read his double jump. And it's all because I put the fireball there for pressure. There are situations where the fireball is just true. It's just hard for me to set it up in practice mode. But, like, I think the fireball is technically true there, but it also looks like I could have gotten a lot of other things. Maybe that's a good example of how it looked. Um, so, try and keep that in mind. I think sweet spot up air, high percents, they drift away, throw a fireball, learn the timing and placement, and you can get a lot more damage. And, you know, now they're on fire, so if you get a strong attack, they're probably dead. So that's everything about his basic combos. Now I'm going to talk about his recovery mix-ups. So I've gone over all the details about how down B works. And so now I'm just going to talk about the different options he has to mix them up. So if he's really high up, you if you get hit really high up in the air in the corner, you probably want to use your double jump and down B. You're going to be actionable at that exact point where I'm double jumping. So you can up B out of that. The up back up be back on stage you can double jump down b um to the wall and then have like a little stalling mix up with your down b or you can save your double jump by up being to the wall and then you still have the double jump that you gained from the first down b so i'm getting a down b here i'm going to the wall and now you can double jump aerial my favorite thing to do is double jump a uh, fireball like that you can really time it so that the fireball goes over. Maybe you don't. Uh, something like that. You, so you have those as your options. Um, just in general, try not to use um, your your newly gained double jump if you don't have to, or if you feel really confident in your option going back onto the stage. And it'll you'll stay alive a lot longer. You can. Oh, I know. You can use use your double jump the first time. If, you, if you're not recovering really high, let's put, let's put our cane back over here so we can see. Um, if you're not recovering too high, then you can double jump down here and use your down B. And you'll, you'll basically have three jumps when you're recovering, which is very, very useful. Um, what else do I have written here? It's just a mixture of, you know, ledge dashing on the stage. Oh, I didn't talk about this. I'm so glad. Okay, so now that we're talking about recovery mix-ups, now it's time to mention the one thing I forgot about his up special, is that you can cancel with an air dodge. So you can cancel this this whole startup that where before he gets sent off into a direction with an air dodge, and so that's as you can imagine, very very useful off stage. If someone was to try and gimp you, you can air dodge so that it's not really a safe, it's not really safe to go out there and just edge guard him so easily. Um, what you what you can do as Zetterburn is down B to the wall, up B, air dodge, and then double jump. So I like to go... Oh, if I use my up special, I like to 
kind of use it so that I can position myself somewhere so that where I, when I air dodge in a direction, I can easily double jump and then fireball back on the stage. So I'm gonna use my air dodge to gain some height. That's how I like to use my air dodge to gain some height. Or maybe I want to, maybe I want to land on this platform with my with my down B air dodge cancel move. So I'll go up and out, and then now I can edge cancel the platform on the right. So there's a lot of different options. Explore those. I've shown off some examples here. Uh, he has a lot of mix-ups though, and combined with his aerials, like his back air, which have good disjoint, and his up air, his up air and back air with both check, with which both have good disjoint, and his fireball, which is a projectile. Um, you can you can get find a lot of ways to get back onto the stage with a recovery, which is seemingly really linear. Uh, he has a lot of options. And lastly, that brings me to kill confirms. So his go-to kill confirms are stuff like back air and up strong. It's, let's put the arcane like 100. Um, you can get nair and up strong a lot of the time, like that. And so if they're on fire right before, you can imagine that that up strong would have killed. So full, full nair into up strong can combo. He has the forward air to down air edge guard which I've talked about already. And it's probably too high percent to show it off here, but maybe I can real quick if I put in the lower percent. Just like that. Um, you can get the forward air to down air. You have hit falling up air, which I've shown a lot of, and to up strong, like that. Uh, oh wow, that didn't kill. This goes to show that when they're on fire, the upstrong kills a lot earlier. Way a lot, a lot earlier. Um, and then lastly, probably the best kill confirm in the game is Shine Upstrong, which looks like this. It's a true combo. It can't be DI'd out of on any at any percents that matter. Like I think maybe I've heard like in the 200s or the 300 percents, maybe this move doesn't combo. But as you can imagine, that's not going to happen. And so it doesn't matter. Um, oh, I guess I should put him on DI out to show it off. Oh, the one time I messed it up. <laughs> so yeah, even on DI out, 100%. If you space it correctly, if you space in the in the center of the Orcane, it will combo. Like in that one instance, I just wasn't at the very core. So yeah, let me explain how it works, <laughs> now that I've done it several times. And consistently, mind you. Um, the way it works is you have to be, you can't be at this point. If you shine, okay, well, the steps are dash forward, you have to have forward momentum, you dash forward, you shine, you jump cancel the shine, but while you're in the jump squad animation, you're going to up strong. So it's a jump canceled up strong. Just to prove that it works. Uh, oh, maybe not hitboxes. So here's my jump squat. I can in I can input up strong right now, and it'll and it'll come out. It'll interrupt the jump squat frames, and so it's a it's a jump canceled up strong. Um, and so those are the inputs. This is the way to perform it. The way I perform it. It, well, essentially, if you're using an Xbox controller, I like to slide my fingers across the face buttons. Here, let me show this off. I like to slide my fingers across the face buttons, like this. So, I shine. And since the only thing you can do during a shine is jump, it doesn't matter that my, that my, um, that my thumb hits the A button. It doesn't matter. So, I shine, jump, and then I press my strong button, which is this right one. Um, if I don't hold the direction, I'm going to do a forward air. If I press up, right after I jump, then I'm going to up strong. And that's how it works. So you're going to move forward, have forward momentum, and then you're going to do those inputs. You have to time your shine such that it hits them at this, like, when you're at this point. Like, directly inside of their sprite. Like, 
The position Zetterburn's in when he's moving Arcane is the position you have to time your shine. So, if you do it, that, that's the result. Oh, it's kind of hard to see the game. And that's how it works. Um, with some practice, you'll be able to do it very consistently. It's it's probably the best kill confirm in the game because it just Zetterburn's up strong is is so strong. Like the Orkane's at 89% and just died. Um, you can combo and it's it's a true combo. You can easily get it out of parry. Um, I've even I've done it I've done it in neutral. Like I've read someone's approach option. Like say they're falling down with the nair. I just whiff punish with shine up strong. I I do it actually pretty frequently. Like I've done it in competitive play. I'm sure you can find me doing it if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, just the, the how strong Zayaburn's fire and power up strong is makes that like the best kill confirm in the game. And with how fast it is, it's a frame two kill confirm if you think about it. Maybe like, you know, frame three or four if you consider, or five if you consider the dash animation. Because you have to be running forward to do it. But you can like tech in place like let's say you teched in place and then you can run forward shine up strong it's just very very powerful try and learn it um i would say it's it's not essential to being a top player like being great at zeta burn but it you're missing out on some 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 pills if you're if you're not doing it you're making your life harder and that's going to be it that's everything for this video i hope you guys enjoy guys and gals enjoyed uh he's a really fun intuitive character i love playing him to this day and hopefully you have a good starting point when wanting to pick him up if you enjoyed uh i actually didn't stream this one so can't talk about the stream but or i can't say that i did this one on stream but i uh i stream my my link is in the description below if you enjoyed please subscribe it helps me out and like and I'll be on to the next character soon. Thanks for your patience on waiting for this one. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.